What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Help the channel grow. Uh, but if you've been following along, you know that I'm getting to the end of this four-link build on the back of the budget YJ. Now, all I really have left at this point is, is just to figure out the bump stops and limit straps. Then I got to tear everything down and get to painting, which, you know, actually for me is the more boring part. I hate painting. Uh, so I'm not looking forward to that. But I am looking forward to what I have planned as far as these bump stops go. Uh, I left a lot of room in the front of the tower. And, and my plan from the beginning, I kind of talked about looks was a big thing for me with the way I wanted to do this build. I wanted to kind of focus more on, on packaging and making it look the way I want it to. So the biggest thing that I don't like with these towers is just how much you know unused space there is. So that was one of the reasons I went through so much work at, at getting the back half of that tower straight up and down. So now I have this giant section in the front of the tower that I'm not using. And what my plan is, is to box it out and I'm going to mount my bump stop right off that box out that I'm going to build at a quarter inch plate. And then that way, everything just kind of looks more, more packaged neatly. Um, like I put some more thought into it. I, I just don't like having to offset plates and, and do weird things. Um, I like things to look a little bit, you know, more thought out than that. So, dude, now all I really got left to do is get to welding and try to figure out getting this thing mounted. And then we can move on to the limit straps. So right here, you can see I got a line on the back of the tower. Now, what that line's for is I, I've already measured under articulation, full droop, everything to make sure that this line is gonna give me enough clearance from the spring. So I, I triple check this and I know that this is gonna give me quite a bit of space. Uh, so if I box out up to that line, I know that I still have room between the coil and the, uh, the side plate. Um, that way, if I do need to make any adjustments to the axle and maybe pull it forward a little bit, I've got a little bit of wiggle room to pull it away from the back of the tower if I you know, have any reason to need to. So now that I got this all boxed out, you see I got the axle jacked all the way up to full bump. And I also set the uh, the pad for the bump stop in place. Uh, this is just a rough placement because I've got to figure out, uh, you know, under articulation exactly where this needs to be placed. Uh, because we might be okay here where it's going to hit. But then under articulation, we might miss this uh, pad entirely. So we might have to, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to move it outboard, but I I've got to check that first. Now, I let the gas out of the bump stop so I could collapse it fully. Uh, the reason I did that is because you don't want to be guessing on placement on this and trying to measure. It's just better just to let the gas out 
and, and slide it into your actual bracket. Now, the type that I'm using is a clamp-in style. Now, this is not adjustable. The, the height here is not adjustable. I know that some people try to say that they are, and, and I've even seen people clamp these with it lower down in the in the hole. The, the problem with that is, is that this is not supposed to clamp down super tight on this. It's actually just meant to hold it in place firmly. Um, if you tighten this too much, when when your shaft goes up, it'll actually the it the the body will be clamped down on so hard that it will bite down in onto the internals of this, and the shaft will get stuck up inside of the body. Um, and if you don't have it tight enough to keep it in place, where that will happen, what'll happen is you'll hit a bump hard enough, and that bump stop will just ride up. And what ends up happening is everything that was measured out so perfectly ended up failing and, you know, you could potentially damage your coilovers. So the way these are meant to do it is it's got a little shoulder right here. It's meant to go all the way down and, and be held in place with the clamps, not cranked on. You just want to put those firmly in place. So that's why I have the gas let out, just so that way I can make sure that this is perfectly placed. Um, and what we're going to do is just get this kind of lined up on that box that I made and I'll get it tacked into place right there. Then once I'm done with that, I'll be able to articulate the axle and kind of find the placement for the pad. All right, now that I got the bump stop tacked into place, I went ahead and notched the corner of the bump pad. And the reason I did that is because I need to be able to slide this out underneath it. Um, now, I'm not going to center this right now. The reason being is because I have the actual jacked up square, right? So it's at full, almost full stuff right now, um, but both sides. Now, that's hardly ever, if ever, going to happen with this Jeep. Um, so I'd actually want more room to the inside edge just because the way that my four link is set up as the articulation happens, um, it's actually going to swing to, you know, whatever side is going up, uh, just a little bit, not a lot. So I'm hitting the pad. Obviously you can see that, uh, this is roughly where I think it's going to need a land, um, I just did it at five inches in just that way. If I am right, it, it makes it easy for me to have like a, a reference number for the other side. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out that that it's okay that my, my can is slightly to the outside edge of this just because like I said, under articulation, the axle is going to shift uh, just a little bit. And at that point, I'm going to hit dead center on the pad. Um, and that's just where this Jeep's going to live most of its life is doing articulation. I'm not, you know, planning on jumping it. So I'm just going to tack this in place just so that way I can cycle the suspension and check everything. All right, guys, so I got this side all the way up in full stuff. Other side the full droop, as you can see, and um, I'm good, right? It's, it's hitting a little farther than I thought it was going to, but it's almost about dead center, which is exactly what I wanted. Um... Now, that's good. That was one of the things I needed to check. One of the other things I didn't mention that I wanted to do this to double check is to make sure that I still had clearance on that, um, on that coilover when under full stuff. Um, now, sometimes, depending on the setup, sometimes under articulation, you'll actually get more up travel. And, you know, it's something that you always want to double check because you don't want to bottom these out. Um, if, if you, if you stuff this all the way, you could blow internals, you could damage the body. You could, there's a lot that you could do. So this is one of those like cheap insurance kind of things. Just takes an extra five minutes to double check, make sure everything's good. Um, uh, most, most manufacturers want to see about three eighths of shaft left showing under full, uh, compression. And I'm right about that. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way this is. 
Um, now, all I got to do is get the limit straps figured out. Um, and then I'll go ahead and finish burning in the, the bump pad and everything. So let me go ahead and get this thing down to full droop. And we're going to go over the how I'm going to do limit straps on this because it's going to be a little bit different. All right, with the axle of full droop, I'm going to start looking at mounting these straps. Now, um, there's a couple things that I kind of wanted to point out with the way that I'm going to be doing this. Uh, number one, I'm using a clevis mount. And the reason I'm using this is because I like the adjustability of these. Um, if, you're, if you don't know a lot about limit straps, they stretch. You know, every manufacturer kind of has their own numbers for what they stretch. Um, so when you're measuring for them, definitely look into, into that. Um, now that that's kind of one of the reasons that I, I always like using these clevis mounts because then I get that adjustability to make up for that number. And it, it gives me a little bit to fine tune. Um, you know, like if I was going from right here to right here, I would measure eyelet to eyelet. And then what you have to figure out is what strap is going to stretch to that number and not beyond that. And it, it sometimes, depending on what that number is, sometimes it, it gets really difficult because, you know, you, you might have a manufacturer that just doesn't offer that size. They got a quarter inch larger or maybe a half inch less. And then, you know, it's just not jiving with what you're trying to build. This kind of takes that problem away. and gives you that adjustability to fine tune where this strap is going to, you know, be when it stretches. Now, the other thing that I'm doing a little different is I found a company that offers a link clamp for your limit strap. Uh, I ordered that, I think it's gonna be here tomorrow. So for right now, I'm just gonna worry about getting these mounts done. Um, so what my plan is, is I'm gonna be mounting it here and pointing it straight at my lower link. Um, now there's a couple reasons I liked that. Uh, originally, I was debating on doing it right inside here. There was a couple things I didn't like about it. One, I was worried about how much adjustability I was gonna have on that clev clevis mount just because of you know, where everything is situated. And I was also just worried about contact with the coilover or, you know, clearance issues with the axle. So I really didn't like it. And I also didn't like how far in it was going to end up. This gets it out towards the outside edge. I always like trying to keep my limit straps in line with my coilovers. It gives me a little bit more control. Um, you know, when you start going on the inside of it, you, you start losing that control. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked up and, and get it placed and then I'll be able to start burning in everything and getting everything kind of final welded. Now that that's all tacked in, before I finish weld it up and, and start, you know, buttoning this up, um, I got to get this taken out, obviously, and my my can, my bump stop. Uh, but I also want to gusset the can. So I, I just got a piece of cardboard that I've been trimming on just to get the fit in there snug. Um, now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to add some strength to it because I don't want this hitting and and twisting and, and just relying on this one strip of weld on each side towards the center um you know i just worry about it twisting off you know it's not going to be super strong so gusseting the sides is really important it's going to make sure that you have that added strength that there's no you know force that can twist and tear the welds right off so i'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out then i'm gonna start finish welding this up all right guys so bracket came in finally just got back from the store for getting the bolts so i can mount it uh so i got everything kind of 
finish welded on there and done up so i was really just waiting on this bracket i also was able to knock out doing the uh the reservoir mounts so i took some uh extra dom tubing that I had laying around and and welded it on the top as a as a mount for the reservoir so that actually kind of came out pretty good uh now i'm just go ahead and uh, get you guys set up we'll uh, get this link off and start putting this bracket on So here's a better view of that, that link mount that I was talking about. And all this does is it just slips on it. And then when you tighten it down, it clamps down around the uh, link. Uh, you know, I, I really wanted to do this mainly because of the adjustability. Um, you know, I could have welded a tab on there, but you know, then I end up with, I have to do a full rotation or I have to undo the link and do a half rotation on the, uh, on the actual heim joint. You know, it takes away a lot of that fine tuning ability, and I don't, I don't really like that. Uh, I saw these years ago at a at a SEMA show on on a, a truck, and it was kind of one of those things I was like really intrigued by it because uh, I had never seen them before, and it it was uh, kind of a little bit more readily available. Uh, there was a, I swear I remember seeing it at Barnes Four Wheel Drive and and a couple other websites. Uh, but now, man, these things were hard to track down. Um, I, I'll put the link down below for, uh, for the company. I, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. Uh, but I, I was, I was pretty, uh, pretty surprised how hard they were to find. So, um, if you ever need them, you know, I, I, like I said, I'll put that link down below. They were, I think they were 55 bucks for both of them. So they weren't cheap. But like I said, it gives me back that adjustability and, and kind of keeps it the way I, I had envisioned because I really wanted to keep this, uh, you know, kind of clean and, and and kind of put together nicely. And I'm really happy with how it's coming out. Um, I also got, like I said, I got that upper mount done for the uh, the reservoirs. I just used some old DOM tubing that I had laying around, some extra pieces from the um, from the upper links actually, and I just walled it up there and used the. Uh, uh, use the bracketry and everything that came with the uh, the Fox coilover. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I'm really happy with it. It's looking really good. I feel like it's packaged exactly like how I had envisioned. So let me go ahead and zip this lower link off and, and we'll throw this thing together. These are going to be pretty tight fit, but like I said, they'll they'll go on there, and then from there, they'll clamp down. And there it is. So hopefully uh, you guys like the video. Uh, you'll give it a like, subscribe. Any comments, suggestions down below, guys. I appreciate it. Other than that, uh, that'll do it for this video. And then uh, next up, I'm going to be starting to do the front. I got to start getting that truss put together for the front axle and get it under there so I can start building that three link. Uh, but like I said, hopefully you guys will like and subscribe, help the channel grow. Uh, try to help me put out more videos. Appreciate you guys.